Till now we have seen few types of grammars and we have also seen how are strings generated from the given grammar. Okay, now the question is if you are given a grammar and if you are given a string then how do you find out whether that given string belongs to that grammar or not? So in this lecture we will be studying the method to find out whether a string belongs to a grammar or not. So let us see the steps that we need to follow in order to do this. So here are the steps. Step number one. Start with the start symbol and choose the closest production that matches to the given string. So we start with the start symbol and we choose the production from the grammar that matches closest to the given string. Alright and then the second step says replace the variables with its most appropriate production and repeat the process until the string is generated or until no other productions are left. So we replace the variables. Variables are the non-terminal symbols. So we replace them with their most appropriate production that will match the given string and then we will repeat the process until the string that we require is generated or until no other productions are left. Okay, so these are the steps that we need to follow whether to find out whether a string belongs to a grammar or not. Alright, so now let's take an example to understand this. Okay, so here we have an example. It says, verify whether the grammar, this one, generates the string 00110101. So we have a grammar given here. Actually, this is the production of the grammar that is given. That is, S gives 0B and also 1A and A gives 0 and it can also give 0S, can also give 1AA and can also give the null symbol. This is same as the epsilon symbol and B can give 1, 1S and 0BB. So this is the production of our grammar and we have to check whether this string given here belongs to this grammar or not. Means if the grammar given here can generate this string or not. Okay, so let's see if this string can be generated by this grammar or not. So the first step says start with the start symbol. Okay, so we start with the start symbol and here S is our start symbol. So S is the start symbol and let us see what is the string that we need. We need this string and then the first symbol in our string is 0. So in order to get 0, what production of S can we use? So we, we see that S can give 0B and also 1A. So if I choose this 1A, 1 will be the first symbol but I don't want that. But if I choose 0B, I will get 0 as the first symbol and that is what I want to generate this string. So I will choose 0B. Alright. So this is from the production which says S gives 0B. Now let's continue. Now we got this 0 over here. Now we need one more 0. So for that, this 0 let me write it down. And now the variable that we have is B. Now from B, in order to get 0, what is the production that we can use? So B has these three productions over here and B gives 0 B B. This is the production that I need to use in order to get a 0. So 0 B B. This is by using the production which says B gives 0 B B. Alright, now let's continue. Now we have already got the second 0. Now I need to get a 1. And the variables I have are B and B. This 0, 0, let me copy them down as they are. Now in order to get 1, what is the production of B that I should use? So here we see that B gives 1 over here. So this B over here, I will replace it with 1. And this B, let me just write it down as it is. So this is using the production B gives 1. This one.
from B if I need to get a 1. I can get 1 here but if I choose this one my string will end. But I cannot end my string so I will choose this one where it gives a 1 followed by a variable s. So I will replace this b with 1s. So this is using the production which says b gives 1s. Now moving on we got this 1 over here that means we got this 1. Now I need a 0 and what I have is a s. So let me copy this down 0 0 1 1 0 1 and I have s and I need to get 0. So in order to get 0 from s I need to choose this production which says s gives 0 b. So this s will be replaced by 0 b. Okay so this is using the production which says s gives 0 b. Okay and then moving on we already got this 0 over here. Now the next symbol that I need is a 1 and then the variable that I have is b. So 0 0 1 1 0 1 0 and I have b and I need to get 1. So what will be the production that I will use? b gives 1. I can use this production now because this is the last symbol. So I will use the production which says b gives 1. So I will replace this b by 1. So this is using the production which says b gives 1. Now we see that we have got the string 00110101 which is same as this. Now we see that using this grammar, the production of this grammar, we could generate the string 00110101. So from this it is clear that this string belongs to this grammar or this string can be generated using this grammar. Okay, here we have another example. This says verify whether the grammar S gives AAB and A gives AAB and the empty string generates the string AABBB. So if you remember we have used this grammar in the previous lecture. So let's see if this grammar can generate this string AABBB. Okay, so according to our rules we start with the starting symbol S and S will give A a B. Okay, now I got this A and I need one more A. For that what should I do? Here I see that the variable I have is A and in order to get a small A from this capital A, what should I do? I should use this production where A gives A A B. So I will replace this A with A A B. So this A comes down as it is and instead of this A I will write A A B and this B will come down as it is. So this is using the production which says A gives A A B. Okay, now moving on I have another variable here A and then I got A A and now what I need is I need B B B and I already have two B's here. I just need one more B over here. So in order to do that the only variable I have here is A and A can give only a a b and this empty symbol. So if I choose the empty symbol what will happen? If I choose empty symbol it will become like this a a b b. This is if I choose a gives the empty symbol. But this is not the string that we need. Okay so instead of that from here if I choose a to give a a b. This is the only other production that a has. So what will happen? These two A's come down as they are. And instead of A I will write A, A, B and these two B's. Two B's comes down as they are and this is using the production A gives A, A, B. Now I still have a variable remaining here which is A and I need to get rid of that. So in order to get rid of that I will use the production which says A gives the empty symbol. So it will be A, A, A B B B. This is using the production which says A gives the empty symbol. Now I see that I am getting three B's as I wanted but I am also getting three A's which I don't want. I only wanted two A's. So we see that however you replace this with whatever productions of this grammar you are not going to get a string of this form A A B B B. So we see that this string does not belong to this grammar or this string cannot be generated using this grammar.
Okay, so this is how you find out whether a string belongs to a particular grammar or not. So I hope that was clear to you. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.